Indie creator Juan Navarro introduces three new characters and three short stories. We're going to talk about it in Fuakata number one. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Fukata number one by Juan Navarro on Kickstarter. This issue delivers three short tales of mutants, monsters, and mayhem on the streets of Florida. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Make sure you stay tuned to the end for the final score. Let's talk about the credits. This is a labor of love. It's a one-man band. Juan Navarro is responsible for the writing, art, no colors, it's black and white, lettering, and the cover art. So it's all on one person's shoulders, and let's talk about whether or not it's worth it. Okay, let's get into the meat of this issue. Fuakata number one is an anthology which is comprised of three short stories. The first one is called Meat Hook. The second one is called Rez. The third is called Sexually Transmitted Demons. And all of them are not bad, just cutting to the chase a little bit. They're not bad. So we'll, we'll cover each and get into the, 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 uh, the context of the stories on each one of the shorts and then just the general overall impressions. Starting with Meat Hook, the story introduces the character known as Meat Hook. Uh, he is, for lack of a better term, a mutant pretty much in the same vein as Marvel's Wolverine. He has claws that come out of his hands. He has an accelerated healing factor, which is at least briefly mentioned, although we don't necessarily see it in action. And we catch up with Meat Hook when he's on the trail of a gang of kidnapper, kidnappers who are drug dealers who have stolen a little girl with the ability to accelerate growth from vegetation. So, in effect, they want the little girl because she can super mass produce weed. <laughs> if you if you want to kind of boil it down to the, the, the basic parts. Meat Hook busts in, he busts up the gang, he gets the girl back, and he delivers the girl to her, her parents. And then at the end, he is accosted by uh, Detective Nunez from the police, who says, you know, you can't be running around, well, harming people, beating people up, uh, you know, hurting people, potentially even killing people. Um, because you're not law enforcement, you're not allowed to do that. And she's trying to effectively convince him to join the police to work on the side, the right side of the law, or the least the legal side of the law. And he says, "Nuts to you, I'm out of here." Now, that's the story in a, in a broad uh, stroke. But at the same time, even though it's it's a sh it's a pretty short story, it's only about 12 pages or so. It has a very distinct beginning, middle, and end. The pieces that you don't see. Juan Navarro fills in with exposition, and then you get a very clear idea of uh, the main character, Meat Hook, his personality, what he will do, what he won't do, what he finds important. Uh, all, the all the motivations are filled in either through his direct actions and how he treats this little girl once he finally gets to her, or through the exposi exposition and the dialogue. So even though it's short, it's very complete. And then we'll get to that in the pros and cons in a little bit as far as why that matters. The second story is The Right View. The main character's name is Jonathan Rez Resnick. Rez being in quotation marks as a nickname. Jonathan had, uh, through a, a freak accident, it doesn't really get into the details, is somehow imbued with all the souls and the knowledge and the consciousness of all his past lives. So this is an individual who's been reincarnated multiple times, and now all those individuals are stacked up within his brain at any one moment. So different personalities come into play, different personalities wake up, and he has the ability to let them take over and speak through him and act through him. We catch up with uh, Mr. Resnick, or the Res, as if you will, when he's at a grocery store trying to buy some ice cream, the, ice cream, the store is um, being robbed uh, just as a convenience store. And he allows a the spirit of one of his past lives, who happens to be a Japanese warrior of some sort, to come through and take down the robber uh, pr in pretty short order. So it's a quick-handed introduction. You get the character. You get a conflict, a beginning, middle, and end. You get uh, through exposition and dialogue and narration, you get an idea of who he is, what he's about, and then you see him, see how that scenario plays out and how his personality, personality plays out. Again, it's short, but you get the full, complete uh, beginning, middle, and end. You understand who this character is and, and, and how he operates in the world. 
the last short story uh, titled Sexually Transmitted Diseases is, or I should say, Sexually Transmitted Demons is about this woman who happens to be uh, a demon hunter of sorts. And we catch up with a, a demon who is, for lack of a better term, a succubus. She's acting as a prostitute and she's with her John. And then she goes, the, di the demon goes crazy, spouting all kinds of tentacles and claws and and, and jaws and, and teeth and all kinds of weird places. This demon hunter shows up. She dispatches the demon, but unfortunately she wasn't able to save the John before he's, uh, he's killed in a car wreck when he, when he tries to speed away with his car. And now the demon hunter has a vehicle. So even though you get much less personal information about um, the main character in the third short story, you still understand who she is, what she's capable of, what motivates her, what she's trying to accomplish in the world. And the story, even though it's missing a little bit more of the detail than the other two, still has a pretty decent beginning, middle, and end. And it's fairly compact, fairly complete, and fairly interesting. So that's the long and the short of Fukata number one. What do we like about Fukata number one from indie creator Juan Navarro? Generally speaking, the fact that you have an anthology comic that was uh, completely written and drawn by a single person, uh, and then that the, the anthology has three short stories that are relatively complete, easy to follow, and set up the world and the characters uh, on a very solid foundation is impressive. Uh, the character of Meat Hook, uh, you can see you doing a lot of work there where you could spawn him off because he is very much, a, in a lot of ways, a, a Wolverine type derivative. But you can see his relationship with the police. You can see his relationship with the um, with the local neighborhood and the, and the people in that neighborhood. He's, he's very much set up as a vigilante type character. You can see all kinds of story potential there. Likewise with the Rez in his, the idea of being not uh, possessed of all your past lives is seems somewhat original. I don't think we've ever encountered something like that before exactly. Uh, so that's definitely an, int an intriguing concept. And as somebody who is a former disgraced, uh, I believe he's, he's a former disgraced uh, cop or detective. And now he's now is out on his own as PI. There's a lot of storytelling potential there. And then the, the third related to a, a woman who's a demon hunter who sort of uh, kind of takes life with a, a very a rakish or roguish type of uh, personality. Uh, all kinds of potential there as well. So the, the net effect is you get these three short stories that introduce three interesting characters, and each one of them has gobs of potential. And so this is exactly the kind of thing that we're looking for when the, when Comical Opinions was first established, is bringing attention to small indie, even medium-sized publishers where people just don't aren't aware that the stuff is out there. And then some of it may be pristine perfect and ready to go, but also the things that aren't necessarily pristine perfect or ready to go have a lot of potential. And that's these are creators maybe you're worth that might be worth you paying attention to. Juan Navarro, from what I see here, is definitely somebody that's worth paying attention to and keeping an eye on where he's going, what he's trying to build, and where it goes from here. On the flip side, what didn't we like about Fukata number one? Uh, the art is admittedly rough. Uh, it, it's not, uh, this de definitely not big two quality. That's okay. Uh, we would, I, would say it was, I would say we would call it a diamond in the rough, but it is rough. The structure is there. The lines, the sight lines are there the details are where you need the work. And especially on some of the, the, the wide angle shots, like with Meat Hook when he's jumping around and going through his action shots, uh, there's there's definitely a lack of, lack of finesse and detail. So even though it's a diamond in the rough, it's still pretty rough on, on the art side. Uh, on the lettering side, the lettering looks good. On the uh, story and the script writing, the fact, again, that it's a complete middle, uh, beginning, middle, and end for each one of the shorts is a positive. However, there, there's, there's still some lacking in the detail as far as uh, making sure that the uh, dialogue comes across a little bit more naturally, it's stiff in a few spots, and also understanding that, especially when you're trying to write a story that's very much grounded in Spanish culture in Florida, which is very much Cuban uh, culture, uh, sometimes the uh, Juan Navarro would tend to switch between Spanish and English, but sometimes he would translate, sometimes he wouldn't, sometimes he would just give you Spanish, sometimes he wouldn't. So there's little problems with inconsistency there that, that, that needs to be straightened out for future work. Uh, overall, again, diamond in the rough, but 
there is some rough. So you have to get through it. This feels like an underground comic in a lot of ways, but it's better than average for underground. Final thoughts. What do we think about Focada number one from Juan Navarro on Kickstarter? Uh, interesting ideas, interesting characters, interesting world building. Uh, the artwork has got the basics, some of the basics, especially with the uh, sight lines and, and composition are there. However, overall, the artwork is, is very rough, which is expected for a, a, an indie offering. Uh, and the stories, even though they're complete, sometimes they're a little glitches with the dialogue not sounding natural and not necessarily filling in all the blanks in the best way possible. So it's rough, but it's a diamond in rough. And I think there's a lot of potential here. So this is worth checking out. Therefore, we're going to give Pocata number one uh, from Juan Navarro on Kickstarter a 6.8 out of 10. What do you think about indie comics of this sort? Do you do you find that when you have a kind of a one man band type of comic that you get a little bit of a different vibe than when it's a team effort? Uh, do you like anthology comics? There's all kinds of potential here. And or do you like do you like following creators when they look like they're on a right trajectory? even though they may not be from have all the spit and polish that you're looking for. I want to hear all kinds of ideas and concepts from you, and I want you to let us know how you feel about these kind of things. So leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if you like more reviews just like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.